Hey folks, it's Brian. We got to play Eldarath tonight. We were short one of our players. Uh, but he said to go ahead and go on without him. Um, a lot of a lot of role playing tonight. Uh, not much uh, actual doing much stuff wise. But uh, we start off with uh, uh, a week of downtime, rolling of all rolling all of our um, check marks. Um, and then uh, you know, Wes is going to be studying the guild hall. He wants to increase his wizard staff skill list percentage. He needs to get it up to 50 in order to raise, in order to learn the next um, block of that list. That's what he's working on. Uh, he's also going about getting new clothes made because he knows one of these days the Baron is going to contact him to come and do you know, state events and that kind of stuff. And then he also finds time to go and visit the Lorathian Temple in case Captain Krim is around. Um, Kelmar spends most of the time working at the villa, but he's also spending time at the Sil Sylvanian Temple. Now, uh, you know, worshiping and studying there and that kind of thing. Raymond is studying, you know, the healing staff. Uh, and he ends up taking it to the guild hall with with Wes, you know, they go together kind of thing. Say, okay, you know, what do wizards know about this kind of stuff, right? And they do some scrying type spells things on it. So they can tell that the the, the staff, the staff is not touched by four. Um, but also that it's not in its natural form, that it reaches out into another space, maybe the astral plane. Um, in fact, it's old. It predates I mean, from some of the features it has that appear to be elven structures. Um, and from that, we can tell where it, was made, where it was made. You know, north of Telgar, there's a river by a town named Blackwater. And that river comes down to there from deep up north it actually comes from an ancient elven kingdom and Thorman, my my mentor believes that that's where it was fashioned so this was from before the war with fork which makes it very very ancient uh he's not certain that it's actually dedicated to lorath um, and then asks, you know, would you be interested in partnering with it? It would make a great addition to our archives. But Raymond is not going to let go of this. So, Raymond and Wes then head off back over to the Lorathian Temple. Uh, Wes does spy Krim, and so he goes up to meet her, and she suggests they go for a walk. However, as they're starting to go out, they get intercepted. And Krim apologizes, saying that they'll have to wait for another time. She's being summoned. And so she heads off to where she goes, and Wes... Decides, how oh, it's it's dinner time, and goes to the Golden Lion for dinner. Uh, meanwhile, Raymond and the High priest the Priestess had previously gone down to the Hidden Sanctum. Wes wasn't paying attention because they were Krim. But while they're down there, Krim shows up. The High Priestess gives Raymond a, a primer on their ceremonies, right? So, unlike sacrificing... Um, to your deity, Math, in his his uh, particular case, directly, um, he's going to do something similar that you do with your focus, your holy symbol, and connect you to Math. However, we're going to use the staff to, to try to connect to Lorath. However, he's unsuccessful. Actually, they are unsuccessful because you know they held bonuses and stuff for him. So. During this down week, we also try playing with the puzzle box again. Runt is, Runt is successful in opening this time and narrowly misses getting stabbed with uh, by a trap. And inside the puzzle box is a vial of poison. Uh, there's a spider motif on it with actual silver webbing on the, uh, the vial. And there's an amulet and a spider ring. Um, they all detect as evil... <laughs> Because <laughs> Raymond cast Detect Evil on it. Uh, then he closes the box, and the Detect Evil does not detect evil anymore. So the box has some kind of blocking ability, whether it's like you know, lead or magical thing, we don't know. Some discussion on the plate chest armor. It is plus one steel, so that's ten armor points. 
Um, and there were two potions of healing that we had gotten previously from other stuff. We had actually gone back in. If you watch the live play, it was in the description. Where we start, I started digging back to my older session thing because we were trying to talk about, okay, how much money can we give to the villa um, from this escapade, right? How much money do we actually learn? Because uh, one of the things our GM didn't do, he's been keeping track of stuff on the side. <clears throat> so we have to track it directly. Oh, there's some things I do try to keep track of, right? But it's like, okay, there's a pouch with coins in it. There's a chest with coins in it. Never really tell us how much. But the high priestess throws uh, 500 silver at us that we can then apply to the villa. And we decide we're going to apply it all to the villa. And uh, we give the uh, chest armor to Hjalmar. Because uh, he's our tank. So the next week, Raymond does make that connection with the staff. So we sacrifice a point of power to it. He's attuned to the staff now. Um, and the staff also has protections on it. So it gives him a one, a plus one armor point protection uh, everywhere. And Wes continues training with the wizard staff spells. Kalmar goes to the high priest of Sylvanus, asking about, you know, he's a Lorathian priest. He was somehow Sylvanus decreased the power of Lorath and doesn't know how to deal with that. <clears throat> and his priest tells him, well, you know, all the lesser gods gave up power to Sylvanus. He's the king of the gods in order to defend them all. Uh, Hjalmar, however, in, in thinking about what he was taught, has never been told about any of the deities having changed their power structure within the pantheon. So he speaks to Raymond about it. And one of the things that comes across is they're discussing is the fact that, you know, the things that Hjalmar's talking about are blasphemous <laughs> because the gods are unchangeable, right? They've always been this way. They will ever be this way. And that kind of stuff, right? Uh, okay. Later on, <clears throat> we all head over to um, the guild, meet with Thurmond. We're asking, because we, we talk about this vision that Raymond had, um, and, you know, trying to make the staff its full thing, right? It was in the sunken city in the bay here. Well, that's underwater. We got to figure out some way to, to like, get there, right? So we start talking about, okay, uh, there are water breathing spells, scrolls, potions. And so we talk to uh, Thurmond about that. And um, that, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and a lot of time to make that many potions. And how long do potions last? You know, that kind of stuff, right? So then we go to uh, the Church of Lorath and talk with um, the priest. You know, that we want to try to fulfill this vision, right? And the priest kind of asked Raymond, do you remember having any issues breathing during your vision? Um, he, he didn't recall Raymond you know, choking with water when he came out, even though he was soaked with salt water. Uh, and Raymond, you know, did not have any problems breathing during the vision. And so Raymond grabs Hjalmar and they go down to the docks. <laughs> Raymond <coughs> jumps into the water with his staff to see if the staff will actually give him some kind of water breathing capability. And we go through the whole drowning mini mini game of drowning. And um, he's not successful in having the staff actually have him breathe water. Um, he does take some damage from drowning, but he heals himself with the staff. Um, but all in all, an unsuccessful experiment. So, uh, we all then go back to the high priestess with this idea. Okay, we want to fulfill this vision, but we're not sure how best to go about it. You know, we've gone to the guild and talked about potions and scrolls and spells, but that's a significant amount of energy and cost. Um, and she offers up, you know, the church could help offset some of the costs for um, an expedition to the underwater city, but uh, there's no way they could, you know, front it completely. You know, there are, you know, artifacts, you know, helms of water breathing, that sort of thing, but you know, they don't have any, <laughs> such things are not known of in such numbers. Well, as these this week or two goes along, there's one night when Wes is taking Krim out to dinner, and he notices she's wearing a silver leaf necklace. That looks just like that leaf key for the gates. Um, and Wes asked her, where did you get that beautiful necklace? And said, oh, it was in the chest you guys left us. Because we didn't bother searching through the chest. 
And I and Wes tells her, you know, that looks exactly like a very special key. And um, at that time, I don't think he told her about the gates, but says, let's go and speak with the high priestess. And so they go to the high priestess, and, they, and Wes discusses, you know, there's these gate areas that connect together, and these silver leaf necklace things are the keys to these gates. And there is a gate underneath the altar in the temple, the old temple in the Caves of Chaos where we were there, where the demon was. There is a gate that goes somewhere else. And she asks, you know, about, you know, where else they go. And Wes says, we're not sure where that one obviously goes, but they go to a specific place and possibly multiple places. Uh, we're not sure exactly how all that works just yet. Um, so she, she authorizes, she says, how she put it? She will not condone confronting the fist if we want to go and check out this key and see if it goes to the gates kind of thing. So I grab, uh, or Wes grabs Krim's hand and off they go to the guild hall. Uh, Thurmond is still there. So again, Thurmond, and he points to the next thing. Ooh, that is interesting. And then Wes kind of recommends maybe we could do a stealth mission um, to get to the gate. And if there's some kind of internal distraction that can be made to keep the people away, you know, the fist guys away because the guild has a uh, wizard with the fist out there. Um, that would be very helpful. And Thurman says, give me a couple days. I'll see what I can do. Okay, a couple days later, I'll get back in touch with Thurman. And he was not able to contact his wizard, the one with the fist. So it sounds like they've either been compromised or destroyed or dispersed or something. Um, and so Wes says, does the guild desire to hire a group to go and investigate this? And he says, why, yes, we most certainly do. Do you know anyone? And Wes says, why, I know just the group. Oh, Krim, would you like to come along? She slaps and says, it's my necklace. Of course I'm going to go along. And so that's kind of where we left that night. <clears throat> left that night and uh, set up for our, our next session, which we're going to try and do actually next Saturday because there's some conflicting evenings with some of the other players. So we'll be making up next session, which we can't do on the 28th, on the 21st instead. So we'll see how that all goes. And hopefully we'll be able to get to the Caves of Chaos and open a gate. And maybe, just maybe, it will lead to an underwater city. <laughs> Happy gaming. <laughs>